Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know, like subscribe, and share to help support the channel. Today we are seeing what I have been anticipating for a long time. With the news I am about to reveal to you, it leads me to believe we are on course for the blessing we are all waiting patiently for. When? I cannot answer exactly, and anyone that claims they can are lying to you. Just know that today we are one day much closer than yesterday and there is a light at the end of the tunnel finally. This light is getting much brighter every day and soon we will be passing from darkness to light. Have your affairs written down and in order. Have a plan and plan to act, so you do not have to think about what you're going to do. Will you exchange a little in the beginning and wait for the higher rate? Make sure you have your bank's 800 numbers written down as that is the only phone number you should be calling, besides your financial team and attorney, and that is financial advice. With that being said, let us get started. First article of interest for today, Iraq is considering cutting the dinar as difficult options to face the financial crisis. A source close to the office of the Iraqi Prime Minister revealed that the government is considering reducing the value of the dinar against foreign currencies as part of measures to confront the financial crisis caused by the drop in oil prices and the repercussions of the spread of the new coronavirus. According to the newspaper, The New Arab. The source said, according to the newspaper, the options available to Prime Minister Mustafa Akazemi are mostly difficult, but there are serious dialogues with advisors and economic experts, and during the past days, several options were reviewed to address the financial crisis including external borrowing or the devaluation of the dinar. He added, there are also other options, including offering state factories and public properties for investment or sale, and printing the currency, but these will be the last options. He continued, all options presented have major problems in the long and medium term, but the alternative is the inability to pay the salaries. He pointed out that in the short term he will rely on the monetary reserve for a few months, while taking a series of austerity measures unprecedented at the state level. The current crisis is the biggest challenge for the new prime minister's government, as Iraq is one of the Mano economic countries, because it relied on about 94% of oil sales revenue to provide salaries for employees and retirees of about 4 trillion dinars per month, about $3 billion at a time that did not reach oil revenues have only about $1.4 billion last April, according to official data. Next article of interest. External borrowing. Reducing the value of the dinar. Printing the currency. Reducing salaries. That is, ways to overcome the financial crisis. Iraq suffers from an acute financial crisis due to the drop in oil prices. In light of the spread of the coronavirus, while the Iraqi government is studying with the competent authorities, possible solutions to overcome the crisis, including reducing the value of the Iraqi dinar. According to information, the options available to Prime Minister Mustafa Akazemi are mostly difficult, but there are serious dialogues with economic advisors and experts, including external borrowing or the devaluation of the dinar. Economists suggest going to reduce the value of the Iraqi dinar, stressing that it is the best solution available, noting that reducing the value of the Iraqi dinar will work to reduce the current value of the currency in half, indicating that it will be a substitute for the proposed proposal to reduce the salaries of employees in half, and in both cases, the result will be the same. The experts touched on a group of solutions including offering state factories and public properties for investment or sale, and printing the currency. The government tends to fill the salary deficit, by relying on the cash reserve for a few months, while taking a series of unprecedented austerity measures at the state level. Member of Parliament Ali Fayez said that the economic pressure on Iraq accumulated due to the closure of business and trade facilities and financial life due to the events that occurred on the oil level, in addition to the corona pandemic, while the country suffers mainly from a structural defect represented in its dependence on oil only. He added, that oil is the source of the entry of the US dollar into Iraq, 
which is the force behind the dinar, but its absence means that Iraq is unable to finance. The economist Salam Simsim stated that the government will not be able to manipulate the salaries, and it is constitutionally and legally obliged to provide the salaries of its employees and workers in its sectors. Simsim said, in an interview with Al Masala, that cutting salaries or deducting them will lead to the wrath of the Iraqi street which will not be silenced by cutting its livelihoods today, so the Iraqi government will resort to another option to bridge the financial deficit. She added that the government will resort to a ploy, which economists know, which is to devalue the Iraqi dinar, and when the value is reduced, the per capita income will be halved, so an employee who has a salary of 600,000 dinars will actually receive 300,000 which would make him unable to secure his life requirements. Next article of interest. Finance and health agree on the priority of spending allocation to face corona. Hassan Karim Al-Kabi, first vice president of the House of Representatives, chaired the 12th meeting of the parliamentary crisis cell today, Sunday, 17 May 2020 in the presence of the finance minister Zali Abdul Amir Alawi and the Minister of Health Dr. Hassan Al-Tamimi, Chairman of the Finance Committee, Haytham Al-Jubari, and the Crisis Cell Rapporter, Dr. Jawad Al-Musawi and a number of representatives. Al-Kabi said during the meeting that the reason for hosting the Ministers of Finance and Health and the advanced staff in the two ministries is to find a solution to the acute shortage of medical and therapeutic supplies and treatments not only to confront the corona pandemic, but because most health institutions, whether in Baghdad or the other provinces, have begun to lose their ability to secure their services medical and therapeutic for citizens due to the lack of financial allocations stressing that there are several segments that cannot be neglected to secure their treatments such as cancer, kidney deficiency, leukemia, and others. The head of the cell parliamentary crisis agreed on a number of recommendations will be worked out during the next phase of which grants the Ministry of Health priority urgent in allocations exchange financial operations, and the granting of powers of the wider provinces. In Turn said the finance minister said his ministry was granted health priority sector in terms of exchange allocations, whether governmental or grants in aid, stressing that the government has formed a cell economic crisis to discuss the repercussions of the financial crisis and raise their proposals to the prime minister will hold its first meeting on Monday. He also noted Health Minister Hassan Al-Tamimi said today's meeting ended with opening a direct channel between the Ministry of Finance granted and the Ministry of the Priority and the allocation processes and completion of contracts to reduce delays will affect the nature of the reality of medical and health in our country, who lives a serious crisis represented pandemic corona. Next article of interest. A deputy calls for al Kazemi to take immediate action on special grades and sell them. The deputy of the National Approach Bloc Hussein al akabi called on Sunday, Prime Minister Mustafa al Kazemi to reconsider the names of all special grades and the administrative system in an urgent manner, indicating that some positions were sold during the era of the previous government and cannot be maintained. Al Akabi said in a statement to information that talk about political and administrative reform cannot take place without reviewing the administrative system that governs the country. He added, dozens of agencies, ministries and general managers and the equivalent have been sold and cannot be pursued at all, especially with the stifling economic crisis. Al Yukabi explained that the political bloc seek to name seven ministers before the Eid holiday to give the government full authority to amend laws and carry out reform that will end the economic and health crisis in the country. Next article of interest. Parliamentary finance. The fiscal deficit cannot be predicted and the 2020 budget will be austerity. Parliamentary Finance Committee confirmed that the 2020 budget will be austerity due to the financial crisis that occurred due to the drop in oil prices, pointing out that the budget will suffer a deficit, but it is not known. Member of the committee, MP Hanin al Kadu said in a statement to information that the budget deficit is still unknown, especially that the 2020 budget will be austerity, 
especially as the Finance Committee did not discuss the government about the percentage of the deficit and the mechanisms of budget processing in a manner consistent with the developments of the stage. He added that, the Finance Committee will wait a little to know the government's actions and movements around the budget and how to deal with the fiscal deficit due to the low oil prices. And that, the Finance Committee will have a meeting with the Minister of Finance in addition to the Prime Minister in order to review the budget and find solutions to overcome the crisis, stressing at the same time, not to prejudice the salaries and retirement of employees and their allocations. Next Article of Interest Vietnam Forms Group for Digital Currency Policy Research Vietnam's Ministry of Finance has formed a research group in charge of exploring and formulating policies to manage digital currencies and virtual assets. According to the ministry, the research group will include nine members led by Pham Hong Sun, the vice chairman of the State Securities Commission. The other members will be representatives from the country's securities regulator the General Department of Taxation, the National Institute for Vietnam Finance, Vietnam Customs, and the State Bank of Vietnam's Department of Banking and Financial Institutions. The research group has been entrusted with creating policies that manage digital assets and will help the country stay updated with new developments within the fast-evolving blockchain sector. This allows the Asian nation to respond to regulatory challenges better. Digital Currency in Vietnam In August 2017, the Prime Minister of Vietnam authorized the creation of a legal framework for digital currencies, indicating formal recognition of digital currency in Vietnam. Later in the year, CryptoCompare revealed that about 80% of digital currency transactions emerge from Asian countries. Vietnam was one of the top five countries accessing digital currency websites and platforms, alongside the United States. Japan, and Russia. Vietnam, however, banned Bitcoin's use as a means of payment in April 2018. After the ban, authorities ordered credit institutions to curb the services offered to virtual currency providers to protect against anti-money laundering risks. Since the introduction of the directives in 2018, the situation has remained the same and there is no regulatory framework for digital currency exchanges. This last article is going to give you a bigger picture of where the IMF and the World Bank are trying to head, which is leading to a one-world banking system. This is their agenda whether you agree with it or not and this is a part of what is playing out in the background of the world economies as they use this pandemic to their advantage. How making IMF world centralized bank could affect Morocco? Although big crises demand big solutions. Transforming the IMF into the world's leading fiscal body would require adjustments to ensure equity between developed and developing countries. Rotterdam, the current health crisis has revealed the importance of coordination on a global level. COVID-19 is demonstrating that the efforts of one government can affect the health of citizens on the other side of the globe, as well as the inefficiency of national central banks' responses. Times of deep crisis may be turned into times of deep reform. Some world leaders are capitalizing on the opportunity, raising their voices to call for creating a truly global, centralized, multilateral fiscal body. Transforming the International Monetary Fund IMF, appears the leading way to achieve centralization. Special times, special measures. Governments worldwide have already called on the IMF to make use of its special drawing rights, SDRs, mechanism during the pandemic. SDRs are a basket of international currencies that serve the role of a reserve asset and may be used in times of crises, as SDRs were in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crash. The measures available in regular times, or for regular crises, are not suitable for the COVID-19 pandemic and most likely will not suit the climate crisis. Voicing these fears and pointing to the inadequacy of regional responses, prominent economists Gordon Brown and Lawrence H. Summers called for IMF reform in an April 14 Washington Post column. The two economists envision the IMF expanding special drawing rights to the role of an international currency. Such a development would transfer the governmental power and responsibility for crisis mitigation to the IMF. 
Not only would a centralized IMF be more efficient in managing global crises, but it would also ensure an adequate response, the economist said, highlighting that many developed countries' governments have failed in effectively financing the current crisis. Morocco may find the IMF as the world's centralized bank beneficial, but only if the fund undergoes major changes and distributes the power sharing more equally. Morocco, the regional, getaway. The IMF and Morocco have enjoyed an amicable and mutually respectful relationship for over 60 years. The North African country received its first precautionary and liquidity line, PLL, loan, of $6.21 billion, in August 2012 to protect the country from swinging oil prices. The second loan, worth $5 billion, came in July 2014. The IMF approved the third in July 2016 at a value of $3.42 billion. The fund granted each loan for a period of 24 months. PLL is a fiscal instrument designed to support the liquidity needs of member countries that have a strong economic basis, yet remain with some economic vulnerabilities. Dominique Guillaume, the IMF's mission chief in 2012, compared PLL to an insurance policy in the event of external shocks or a worsening international situation. Morocco purchased all available funds on April 20 as a fourth PLL lending. The loan, worth $3 billion, will help mitigate the effects of the crisis on the country's economy. COVID-19 hit Morocco's main source of foreign currency, the tourism industry, the hardest, causing an unparalleled drop in earnings but Morocco did not request SDRs. IMF officials have widely praised Morocco as the source of stability in the MENA region and as a gateway between Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. Morocco's economic vulnerabilities manifest mostly in social inequalities regarding education and access to the labor market, according to the bank. Morocco will be the first African country to host the annual meeting of the World Bank Group and the IMF in 47 years. The meeting will take place in Marrakesh in October 2021. Christine Lagarde, the IMF's managing director, declared in a speech during the official signing ceremony that Morocco is a country that perfectly illustrates the convergence of the humanitarian values that unite us all. IMF as the world's centralized bank. Special drawing rights are crucial to the idea of making the IMF the world's centralized bank. At the moment, they are international reserve assets in the form of five major global currencies. The distribution of SDRs follows the voting power distribution in the IMF. It varies depending on a member state's financial contribution to the shared pool. Currently, the U.S. contributes the most so the country enjoys a 16.5% voting share. The current distribution is unfavorable for developing countries with lower contributions. One can speculate that this is why Morocco opted for PPL, not SDRs, in the time of COVID-19, making SDRs an instrument of reserve that would be exchangeable in the international arena is the revolutionary idea that Jose Antonio Ocampo, a Colombian politician and economist, introduced in 2019. In his note on the IMF's website, The Economist mentions the benefits of such a change, empowering countries to create an international currency, reducing demand from emerging economies for foreign currency as insurance, which is how Dominique Guillaume described Morocco's PPL loans, and making the international monetary system more independent from U.S. policies. Condition, equity, the move to make the IMF the world's centralized bank would only succeed if inspired by the aim to realize true equity between countries. To ensure such equity, the member states would have to agree to scrap the quota system, a development that appears highly controversial to the U.S. Developing countries currently need to subordinate to the IMF's lending conditions, which do not always prove beneficial for the borrowing states. A common criticism against the IMF's policies is the austerity measures that come as the loan's conditionality. For example, in the COVID-19 context, the measures prove dangerous in Sierra Leone.
The East African country has zero point to doctors per 1,000 inhabitants because the government had to cut public spending following the IMF structural adjustment policy in the 1990s. Nezha Larici, a prominent Moroccan economist, warned against Western-style austerity measures as they could lead to social disasters. Her words find confirmation in the recent social tensions in Algeria, as described in the 2019 IMF Global Development Report. Establishing the IMF as the world's centralized bank could work, but only if its transformation ensures a way for every country, regardless of economic status, to participate equally and in a manner that allows for prioritizing their citizens. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. Don't forget to save the link to my channel on the library platform and check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well. The links to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.